I see you again. I just want to share something with you before I begin talking of our ancestors. One of my purposes behind this exercise of futility, uh, because, you know, no one is listening to my stories, much less, you know, me. Um, but they need to be told because I have to throw all that paperwork away and I don't want it to be such a wasteful energy to have spent all those hours accumulating uh, that documentation. Um, I offered it to um, others locally, but they don't want it. Uh, as if you have YouTube, you will see that there is a general summary of what each episode discusses, focusing on a name and or some kind of uh, reason why I, I found it interesting enough to mention. And what I'm doing is I'm going to accumulate these. You've heard me talk much of Dante, but I, I've also studied of other such um, literary adventurers. I'm, I'm very much impressed with Chaucer. So he be an ancestor of mine for sure, hey? Uh, but this is something I created and you can find it online. Uh, if I knew how to sell it I would but I don't and <clears throat> it's just a different way of looking at the major arcana. So I have uh, uh, an intent in mind whereof uh, this chart is more fully explained in relation to our uh, Canadian identity and that be of the fool um, him be any uh, of us men who claim to have uh, ancestral blood relations a long-standing tie deep roots so to speak with with our family tree here in the new world um, our ideal princess being that uh, female energy so these different personalities that are uh, identified here in this uh, Inukshuk I have made um, a Canadian will know what an Inukshuk is this is an, an Inukshuk can you see it with the arms bent uh, showing he is a mighty man We're not going to talk of this chart, though. Uh, part of the reason I brought the chart up is because of what I want to now share with you. And I was walking outside in the bad weather the other day, thinking of the storm where with me discovered the uh, felled crow's nest in perfect condition. And I could see in the nearby trees where the leaves are all gone that there are other such uh, crow's nests therein. And it dawned on me, and it, it's been something I've long-standing thought. And um, I believe that there is an inherent uh, mythological legend shared uh, with in the Crow community, within, um, within, well, wherever, uh, it's it's something ancient. It, it's I don't believe that they are just stupid things that just exist and react. I I came to this conclusion because I wrote an email to the. Uh, a Natural History Museum in Regina, which had at one time a diorama uh, dedicated to the Indian teepee and the arrangement of the poles. Uh, you don't just huck them up and hope that they hang together the right way. You know, it takes time and practice, and each pole itself stands for uh, some element uh, dedicated to the communal well being or. Uh, the communal relationship with uh, the Great Spirit. Um, we 
uh, uh, citified folk have long forgotten how to uh, really communicate with nature. And uh, the cosmopolitan disease is, is, is an infectious thing that uh, doesn't just uh, sicken the spirit of the individual, but the, the whole of the societal mass. And these stories I'm sharing with you furthermore, I am hoping will instill within you an interest in our communal relationship, because that's a, that's a long-standing, deep-rooted um, uh, history we have in the soil. And if, if, you, if you are uh, having any understanding of, of uh, the collective unconsciousness and, 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 and ancestral memories, you, you would be further uh, deeply interested in these things that I, I share with you because I, I do believe in ancestral memories and uh, I believe in shamanic spirits uh, being able to communicate with uh, the spirit entities. So let's uh, look at some of these uh, charts. Um, I just grabbed this little brick here off the top. Uh, three generations. Bartholomew Beaugrand married Perrette Bonguer in France. Their son Jean Beaugrand de Champagne, born 1641 in France. Um, the words Sorrel Tracy are listed here in a box, as with his son Jean Baptiste Beaugrand de Champagne. Perhaps they were both members of the Carignan Salier. More likely, they both settled that neighborhood. The father, Jean Beaugrand de Champagne, son of Bartholomew Beaugrand and Perrette Bonguer, married Marguerite Samson Pennison. The son, Jean Baptiste Beaugrand de Champagne, married Francois Guisnard, born 1680, died 1750. Age 35. And another little brick. They start um, on that edge because uh, I, I I often begin a chart there if I if I don't know for an exact certitude uh, where the paternal line originates and I have to advance the genealogical chart as it grows uh, across the page accordingly. Here we see François-Pierre Seguin de Ladderoot married Jean-François Petit. Their daughter Marie-Jean Madeleine Seguin was born 1680 in Canada and died 1749, age 69, having married Joseph Robert du Dit L'Espagnol. L'Espagnol. And their daughter Marie Jean Robert du, 1718 to 1749, died age 31, married Pierre Magnin de Champagne, who lived to the age of 75, dying in 1785. Their daughter was Marguerite Seguin de Champagne. So that is a a family that uh, evolved um, in Quebec after the problems with the Iroquois were all solved, but prior to much westward expansion and uh, the development of settlements uh, thereof, uh, such as uh, Pembina, Turtle Mountain, Red River, etc. Here's a scrolling chart. It 
seems to be focused on David Grant, born 1725. Esther Lethendry, him the father of Cuthbert James Grant Pear of the Northwest Company and Robert Grant. Cuthbert James Grant Pear was born 1752 Easter Lethendry Cromdale Strathsby, Scotland and him died in the service of the Northwest Company uh, living in Kaministiqui Northwest Territories which would be around Thunder Bay, Ontario he married a Cree woman called an oasis who had been born about 1751 in the Rupertsland neighborhood. So they were relatively the same age. Three, uh, four of their children are mentioned here. Marie Grant, born about 1776, Northwest Territories. Died 1877, December 22, was the wife of Pierre de Versant de Falcon, the riche le chansonnier, born about 1775 in Rupert's Land, the son of Pierre Jean Baptiste Falcon, a Northwest Company French Canadian voyageur, and a Cree woman of Missouri origins. Marie Marguerite Grant, born 1789, Quapel, Northwest Territories, was first married to Michelle Monet de Belle Humor, who had been born 1766 in Bertherville. Three of their children are mentioned, and the first two be twins. Michel Monet did belle humor fille, and his sister Josephette Monet did belle humor, who married Jean Baptiste Fagnant. Michel Monet did belle humor fille it has three marriages listed. The first to La Rien Lachemandier. Next to Josephette Sato, a daughter of Chief Ojibwa Chippewa Chief Little Shell, and his third wife was Josephette Brulia of Rupert's Land. The brother of the twins, Andre Monet de Belhumer, born 1805, birth to Euroville, Quebec, died 1881, Pembina, Dakota Territory, uh, married. His half sister, um, Marguerite Morin, called a Sato woman, born about 1810 Rupert's Land, of the union of Marie Marguerite Grant, daughter of an oasis, and Cuthbert James Grant Pear. And her second husband, Andre Henri Poitras Pere, 1760 to 1830, St. Joseph Pembina, Dakota Territory. So Andre Monet did belle humor, the son of Michelle Monet did belle humor, and Marie Marguerite Grant, daughter of Uten Oasis, and Cuthbert uh, James Grant Pere was the husband of Marguerite Moran, a Chateau woman, daughter of Henri-André Poitras Pere, second husband of Marie Marguerite Grant, daughter of uh, Oasis and Cuthbert James Grant. And four children are listed. Josephette Monet Belhumer, Jean Monet de Belhumer, Marguerite Monet de Belhumer, 
and Cecile Monet did better humor. The fourth child is Cuthbert James Grant Pear and Cree Woman Wooten Oasis was Joseph F. Grant to whom first married Pierre Montour. Also in turn marrying Jean Wills and Charles Latour. And the fourth child, uh, uh, an oasis, Cree Woman, and Cuthbert James Grant Parra was Cuthbert James Grant Fee. Captain of the Metis, uh, Sephiroth was Xavier, or um, White Horse Plains. Him first married, or having a relationship with an unknown Sioux woman, mentioned uh, them married in uh, Native Tradition 1813. Uh, next, Eliza McKay and their son James Grant, born 1815, whom died, they disappeared. And the third wife was uh, Marie Desmarre, born about 1794 in Rupert's Land. The daughter was Marie Rose Grant. The fourth wife listed here is Marie McGillis, born 1795 Rupert's Land. So that, that is another quick look at uh, the Warden of the Prairies. <clears throat> this is another another chart differently prepared and presented concerning Cosbert Grant and Cree Woman Oasis. It says here that uh, Cuthbert Grant Fee um, had been baptized uh, as a pedestrian in Montreal, 1801, October 12th. And his son with Marie McGillis is uh, called Cuthbert Grant, husband of Marie Gingras, parents of Marie Grant, wife of Andre Henry Poitras III, son of Andre Henry Poitras and Marie George, daughter of Joseph at Indian and Frederick George of Soros River Northwest Territories. Another daughter of Cuthbert Grant of Utten Oasis is mentioned as Marie Suzette Grant. Uh, we talked to her, yes, uh, the wife of Pierre de Versant Falcon, son of a Creed woman, and Pierre Jean-Baptiste Falcon, son of Pierre Francois Falcon and Marie Genevieve Victorie Tremblay. Born to Etienne Falcon of Saint Quentin Beauvais, Picard de France, and his wife Marianne Bourgeois, and first French family Louis Tremblay and Rossel Soumard. The sister of Andre Henri Poitras III is Oufrasine Poitras. Wife of Francois Falcon de Versant, son of Pierre de Versant Falcon and Marie Suzanne Grant. So we've we've had a, a little bit more of a deeper look into the uh, the Cuthbert Grant family, and they are as the warden of the plains, uh, a mighty powerful political family in that time, thereabouts in that, in that, in that neighborhood. <clears throat> well, 
This chart you might not find interesting at all, but it gives us a reason to discuss a phenomenon that I've found in doing genealogical charts. And it is where, as is illustrated here, about middle, this lone individual, Martin LaValle. We might not know much more of Martin LaValle except him be the son of Pierre LaValle and Catherine Paloquin. And that he is the father of Emilie LaValle. In, in many of the charts, especially many of the older charts, you will find <coughs> that as we study the principle, um, we double the, the father and the mother, the grandfather, the great-grandmother, etc. And it, it doubles with every generation from 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, etc. It just keeps doubling and every generation there are more probabilities and possibilities for continuance or connection except um, that this, uh, this doesn't really reign true because as we've seen, many of these people we've talked about come from unknown origins. And they're, they're, there's this dying off in these long the chain reactions, say 14 to 32 generations and more from you, that uh, can, can had some sort of contribution genetically to you. Uh, mostly, though, it's this gray area because um, <clears throat> as we progress or um, ad ad advance to the rear, so to speak, uh, more and more so persons are, are lost to antiquity having uh, originated unknown. And then we find there's these whole bulbs, these balls of names and identities and they're held together with other similar bulbs and bulbs by one single name and sometimes we don't know too much more about them or if not one single name then a tiny little brick of names as we've discussed um, many bricks And as I've said, uh, I, I, I've traced my genealogy back 146 generations onto Adam, Son of God, and mitochondrial Eve. And all true Canadians do, and in so much as they can, and so do, we are brethren. We've talked before of great names of great men in history and a lot of these great men who have great names in history cannot trace their name back much farther than their great-grandparents or their, their great-grandparents. And mostly throughout the world most people have no more understanding or knowledge of whom their great-grandparents were in some cases much less more their grandparents themselves and these uh, spit sampling DNA collectors uh, really don't do much more than share with you whereabouts you're from not so much much less uh, which family you evolved in of therefore from As, Mich as Martin Lavalle here, the son of Pierre Lavalle and Catherine Pelloquin. Pierre Lavalle, the brother of Louis Lavalle, who married Marie Madeleine Haas de Cornier, 
sister of Pierre Haas de Cornier, first married Amable Palaquin, next married Marguerite Palaquin, daughters of Emmanuel Palaquin and Marguerite La Vallée. Emmanuel Palaquin, the son of Felix Palaquin and Marie Palchier, daughter of Michel Palchier, son of Francois Palchier, Dit Lantea, and Marguerite Madeleine Morisot. So we talked about that in Yuckshuck earlier. This this is a story, a love story. We would I would alloc allocate uh, the, the story, the love story of Dorothy La Savagesse of Francois Peltier de Fontaine to a position on that chart when I discussed whom we were as an identity, speaking as a representative of that identity, because in each of us true born Canadians is a little piece of that Canadian identity, whether you know it yet or not. And on the prairies where I'm from, there are an immense amount of folk who think that they, because of their anglicized name and the fact that in the, uh, the 30s, the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s, there, there was a lot of oppression towards the Métis or the mixed blood or the half-breed people, and a lot of the folks like the French-speaking people did towards uh, uh, St. Fran Francophone territories or whatnot. They, they kind of whitewashed their heritage and forgot about it. Mary Campbell talks about it in her book, uh, Half-Breed. Michel Peltier, son of Francois Peltier and Marguerite Madeleine Morisseau, was the father of Marie Peltier, married Felix Peloquin. Her brother was Michel Peltier, husband of Marie Louise Latendre, sister of Jean Baptiste Latendre, whom wed Marie Jean Haas. Their son Jean Baptiste Latendre married Madeleine Loiseau Carden, and their daughter Agatha Latendre married Joseph Chevalier, son of Joseph Chevalier and Ursula Cornier. Joseph Chevalier, the son of Joseph Chevalier and Marguerite Doucette. Joseph Chevalier. Husband of Marguerite Doucette was the son of Jean Baptiste Chevalier and Catherine Lavalle. Jean Baptiste Chevalier was also wed at one time with Francois Alavoyne, and them also had twins. And Charlotte Chevalier was the wife of René Brassa, son of René Brassa and Anne Gagné, and her twin brother was Louise Pachel Chevalier, husband of Marie Madeleine Rayoum, daughter of Jean Baptiste Rayoum and Simfros Uva Uva Gukui. Definitely a uh, Indian name. Probably a Iroquois name of one sort or another. And again, the Chevalier name stands out as an important name in the actual establishment of the first French family. They're, they're the ones that prepared the land for the first French family, so to speak. So we see a, a, a really interesting... Um, Voyage here down different, completely different lines, uh, spawned or sired by Francois Peltier and Michel Peltier. Noted here is also uh, Louis Cartier, husband of. Josephette Haas de Millet, 
also married at once to Michel Le Vallée, the brother of Marie-Louise Le Tendre, the wife of Michel Pelletier, brother of Marie Pelletier, wife of Felix Paloquin. The son of Louise Cartier and Joseph Hasmillet was Theost Cartier, the wife of Francois Pelloquin, the brother of Marguerite Pelloquin, the second wife of Pierre Hus Cornier, whom we talked of uh, at the beginning when we began talking of Martin Lavalle. Emile Lavalle, the descendant of Martin Lavalle, was the father of uh, Josephette Lavalle, and ma her married Maxime Lapine. Emile Lavalle was also um, responsible uh, as a father of Charles Lavalle, who married Marguerite Corsin. Sister of Angelique Corachine, wife of Joseph Delorme, Exo Vides. So that's a big jump there from the Great Lakes, the Iroquois, and the first French family within what, four generations to an Exo Vide family. Of course, Maxime Lapine and his sister Julie Lapine, the wife of Philbert Latterout. Brother of Madeleine Latterute and Rosalie Latterute. Rosalie Latterute, the wife of Joseph Thuron, son of Jacques Thuron, the Marie Louise Lacombe. Rosalie Latterute, the wife of Joseph Thuron, son of Jacques Thuron, the Marie Louise Lacombe. Parents of uh, children whom were ex Sovietes, the seven stars that were around. Riel's head. Joseph Tarand? No, this is a different. These, La Louve Josephette Paul was uh, the wife of Joseph Tarand, the son of Joseph Tarand and Rosalie Laderoot, the sister of Philbert Laderoot, the husband of Julie Lapine, the sister of Maxime Lapine. The husband of Josephette Lavalle, the daughter of Emile Lavalle, and again we're going in a circle. Charles Lavalle, the son and brother, the husband of Marguerite Corsin, back here to Joseph Delorme. Catherine Delorme, a heroine, a wife of uh, martyr Don Daniel Ross, is mentioned as a sister of Joseph Delorme, husband of Angelique Corsin. Francois Delorme married Rosalie Tarand, the sister of Joseph Tarand. And Jean Baptiste Tarand. A um, final close note on this uh, long family chart. We'll talk of Louisville Buron, who married Marianne Indian. Their, their son, Louis Plouf de Ville Buron, married Marianne Colette, a snare woman. And their daughter, Bridget Ville Buron, married Joseph Esnaud Delorme. And it is them whom are the parents of Joseph Delorme, Catherine Delorme, heroine, Francois Delorme and Angelique Delorme. The more often I mention these names and these families and in their varying connections and relations to each other formulates a different understanding to say the circulatory structure 
uh, anatomically speaking of that person whom we are as as indeed we are a statutory identity within the League of Nations worldwide internationally speaking especially wherewith we speak of ourselves as a, a, a as not an individual a person or a sovereign identity but as a nation of sovereign persons having a collective identity the Canadian identity you you have to be born Canadian to be Canadian in the context that I am referring to in so much as um, to be born Canadian means to have First Nations roots, um, milkutus, half-breed roots, pioneer European roots uh, that were scattered and settled during the uh, uh, early years of the de uh, the development of the Dominion before there was a Canada, and of course the French Quebec, uh, Franc francophone. Uh, the Anglos, the Scots, the Bungay Creole speaking folk, um, and then some black and some Asian whom were here uh, all over at a very early era when it was really much more difficult for anybody than it is now. Now, now what's happening is something different. Uh, we won't talk about that because that's not of interest to us as is our genealogy and our shared heritage. <clears throat> to that event, this chart is more or less the merging of the Laframbois and the Dumont families as one family. Here, we see two men sharing distinction as head of the family. Jean Dumont, husband of Suzette Sarcy, and Joseph Fofard de la Frambois, husband of Josephette Assiniboyen. Two children are mentioned of each union. Marie Cécile Dumont was involved in three serial marriages. First with Jacques Berger, second with Joseph Laframbois, and third with Joseph Desmeres. Her brother Jean Dumont Père was involved not so much in a serial marriage, but a marriage chain. That marriage chain was a serial marriage involving the sister of Joseph Laframbois, second husband of Marie Cécile Dumont. Her Marguerite Laframbois, daughter of Assiniboyen Josephat and Joseph Raffard dit Laframbois. So, we see here a double union reaffirming that relationship in Marie-Cécile Dumont and Joseph Laframbois and Jean Dumont Père and Marguerite Laframbois. The children of Marguerite Laframbois, Jean Dumont Père, Louise Baptiste Point Brand de Saint Regret and Henri Monroe Fisher are not so much mentioned. Henri Monroe Fisher is mentioned, though, as one of two husbands of Louise Berger, the second being Jean Baptiste Patenot. Louise Berger was the daughter of Jacques Berger and Marie Cécile Dumont. For these folks to have the relationships that they do, 
in relation to the territory that they lived, you must understand that great distances of time, not much less just distances of space, existed uh, in betwixt each person or each little familial uh, group or each little clan over the passage of those long distances of time. So it, it, it's really not like going downtown and hooking up. Now the brother of Louise Berger was Pierre Berger and him was the uh, husband of Judith Wilkie. Their daughter was Catherine Berger, who was wed in Montana. But, you know, there's, there's, there's not much else said here. Uh, there is uh, of note, we were just talking of important love stories and that uh, chart we began our show today with. Well, what do you know? Angelique Laframbois, the daughter of Marie-Cécile Dumont, the daughter of Suzette Sarcy and Jean Dumont, was the wife of Isidore Wah Bachelin Wah Perranto. And twas her whom e'er so sadly perished with her little child, a daughter seemingly, in the prairie fire of 1852, Walhalla, Dakota Territory, God bless them, both their souls may be in heaven. If you didn't listen to me speaking these stories, would you know of those people? You know, they, they matter, they're family, right? They're pieces of you and me. Like sparks that, that, that float away into the dark of the night and dissipate and disappear. Where will we try and draw near the fire to stay warm? This chart's titled Beauchamp. Seems to be featured on Jean-Baptiste Beauchamp, son of Jean-Baptiste Beauchamp, and Angelique Pambrun Pangaman. There is a marriage cluster, or a chain marriage. Um, shown here and it's very complex. We'll run through those names there. Jean-Baptiste Beauchamp, husband of Angelique Pambrun Pangaman, then number three Jean-Baptiste Jean Lemay, number two Francois Boucher, Number one, Antoine Lemire Agon, a little son of Antoine Lemire of Paris, son of René Lemire, son of Jean Francois, Gonville Lemire, son of Jean de Gonville Lamar. All in the multiple or serial marriages to Louise Rivette Uriel, daughter of Rivette Uriel. And Pashtakom Kwe, daughter of Ondegwos, a native woman, most likely. Antoine Lemaire Gonville was said to later marry Marguerite Guillaudry Le Coutre La Vigny Labine, daughter of Jean Baptiste Labine dit Le Coutre Guildrug and Joseph Adnathan. I 
I assure you I have not done enough reading into the Pangman family to even begin uh, relating to you whom the native women are that are mentioned on this chart, nor their names. They should stand out because of that. Um, Now this is a little family brick that is like a great big stone just set right there into the wall of whom we are. The, the, the dividing line that distinguishes us from all the other peoples here in our nation, in our country, in, in the land of our forefathers. This, this, this is really a really beautiful rock if you know how to distinguish between the different rocks that are spread all around by the Canadian shield. <laughs> the uh, familial heads which stand out onto the fourth generation are Nicholas Cook, husband of Elizabeth Templaire, parents of Pierre Cook Lafleur. Husband of Marie Mit Migukui, daughter of Bartholomew Mit Iomia Gukui, and Carolyn Pachirini. Five children are mentioned Jean Cook, 1657 to 1679, Louis Cook Montour, 1659. Him married Marie Madeleine Sokuki. Sokuki. Their children were Francois Montour, Jacques Montour, and Marie Madeleine Montour. The third child of Pierre Cook Lafleur and Marie Mathieu Maguki was Marie Angelique Conque de Gaït Lafleur. Wife of Francois Sincerny, 1649 to 1725. Then the parents of two listed children here, Louis Delpy Saint Sorony and Marie Jean Delpy. We'll deal with them momentarily. In the meantime, there be two other children, a Pierre Cook Lafleur and Marie Mithiwa Maguki, and that is Elizabeth Cook and Marguerite Cook. The two children of Francois Sincerone and Marie Ange Lucanc Light Lafleur, daughter of Marie Mithiwa Maguki, daughter of Carolyn Pacherini and Bartholomew Me. Tioma Gyukuki, and that is Mary Jean Delpy, whom first married Joseph Petit de Bruno, Signor of Bruno de Maskingong, son of Joseph Petit de Bruno, Signor de Maskingong, and Marie Chani, and them were the children of Henri Petit and Elizabeth Fontaine and Sir Bertrand Chani de la Garonne and Marie Madeleine Ballinger. The second wife of Joseph Petit de Bruno, Seigneur de Bruno died Masconge, was Seigneurice Agassicar Dite Carfuel. Carfel, Carufel, and her was the sister of Marie Elizabeth Carufel, who married Louis Delpy de, Louis Delpy Saint Sorony, Sorony, the brother of Marichon El Delpy. So that is a double wedding, or a double union for us and Jean Sicard did Carfel and Genevieve Wright, and. Francois Sincero, Nate, and Marie Angelique Conque died the Fleur. The name Joseph Petit died Bruno, Signor de Masconga, uh, stands out. 
um, his sister Madeline, Marie Madeline was an Ursuline, and his other sister Marie Jean married Claude Crevier. So if I didn't cover it well enough for you, I'm sorry. You can look those names up at any time. Uh, I, I merely hope that if there's any of you out there that do listen, that you do find an interest. There seems to be two lines drawn on this single page. Jean-Marie Henault married Marie-Anne Latour. I'll begin again. Joseph-Marie Henault de Lorme did Canada married Marie-Anne Latour. Their daughter married François Forêt. Their son Jean Baptiste Anos Hanot de Lorme married Marie Elizabeth Page, sister of Toissaint Page, children of Alexander Page and Marie Angelique Pru, daughter of Therese Fauscher and François Proulx. Jean Baptiste Esnaud de Lorme and Marie Elizabeth Page were the parents of Joseph de Lorme and him married Brigitte Plouf de Villebrun, daughter of Marianne Collette, a snake Ojibwa woman, and Louis Plouf de Villebrun. Their daughter Angelique de Lorme was the wife of Honorable Jean Baptiste Turand, the brother of Jacques Joseph Turand and Marie Corcine. Jean-Baptiste Batache Le Tendre married Marguerite Leon Delaunay Leone, their son Louis Batache Le Tendre married Julie Delon. Madeleine Laderoute married Emmanuel Beaugrand de Champagne, widower of Marguerite Le Rock of the Blackfoot Confederacy. So we look deeper into Joseph de Lorme and Bridget Plouffe de Villebrun. And we see, yes, Joseph de Lorme, the son, married Marie Angela Angelique Corchin, the daughter Julia de Lorme, married Louis Batache Le Tendre. Hélène Bridget Delorme married Anton Corachin. Francois Delorme married Rosalie Laurence Tourand, daughter of Rosalie Ladera and Joseph Tourand. And Angelique Delorme married Honorable Jean Baptiste Tourand. The value of me reading this is uh, much more because uh, it, it shows an interrelation betwixt uh, my paternal grandmother's heritage and the heritage of my maternal grandmother's um, earlier husband and children thereof whom are my uncles and aunts. So I'm also interested in the extended family because that is as I've seen in my studies, an essential part of who we are because of how interlinked all of our roots are. When that wind doth blow, um, the oncoming storm wash o'er us, you know, we better hope that we are uh, well rooted. So, 
So we're going to talk here a little bit mostly about uh, my paternal grandmother's ancestors, uh, beginning in Acadia, where was uh, Antoine Landry, husband of Marianne Cormier, whose, da whose father Robert Cormier was a master shipbuilder at La Rochelle, France. Their son Nicholas Landry married Marguerite Torel de Jolicoeur. And their son Joseph Denis Landry married Genevieve Lalonde. And two of their children are listed. Ancestor Adelaide Landry, wife of Thomas Stanislaus Bruno brother of frontiersman Alphonse Bruno, the children of Honorable Francois-Jacques Bruno and Margaret Harrison, the sister of Margaret Harrison, Marie Harrison, was the wife of Jean-Baptiste Lasmagier, the third La Prairie. And their sister Marianne Harrison was the first wife of the trader Charles Nolan. Him afterwards married Rosalind Lapine, uh, who had prior been married to Geoffrey Lajmagier. This is a, a, a bourgeois Red River family. Uh, a, a family line I share with the the Riel family, them rooted in the Lachemagier family. So Jacques Chemillard and Francois were the parents of Genevieve Chamillard, wife of Francois Amable Lalonde. The parents of Francois Lalonde, husband of Marie Josephette Marlot, the daughter of Marie Joseph Turpin and Jean Baptiste Marlot, son of Joseph Marlot and Marie Rennes. Two children are listed as born of Francois Lalonde and Marie Joseph Marlot. Genevieve Lalonde married Joseph Denis Landry. And Archange Lalonde, wife of Honorable Pierre de Bastoir Barbeau. Three children. Four children are listed born to Honorable Francois Jacques Bruno and Marguerite Harrison, daughter of Cree, Sarah, and Northwest Company, Edward Harrison, son of shipowner Edward Harrison, Frontiers Manathanas Bruno, Thomas uh, Stanislaus Bruno, husband of Adelaide Landry, parents of great grandpa Napoleon Joseph Bruno, husband of Marie Carrier. Genevieve Bruno, wife of Eli Pierre Landry, parents of Joseph Landry, husband of Marie Louise Falcon, and Clotilde Bruno, whom wed uh, Jean Francis Grant, son of Richard Grant of Montreal and Marianne Braylon. Sister of Marie Carrier, listed here as Marie Adelaide Bruno, wife of Paul. Oh, the brother of Marie Carrier, listed here as Paul Carrier, husband of Marie Adelaide Bruno, sister of Napoleon Joseph Bruno. So there again is more of that uh, that interlocking root structure, but here we're not talking of. Uh, the Quebec 
Ontario, but of the Red River Territory, Rupert's Land, Northwest Territories. Now, Marianne Harrison, the first wife of traitor Charles Nolan, was the mother of Adolf Dennis Dolphus Nolan, husband of Elise Latendra, daughter of Catherine and Gordon and Andre Latendra pair. Adolf Dolphus Nolan was the brother of Rami Moni Harrison and him was killed by lightning. So we've we've not talked or ever encountered that yet and uh, I don't believe we will hereafter. So, you know, that stands out. That what a unique way to pass. And the youngest brother, Damas Harrison, was the second husband of Helene Jerome de saint math daughter of Jean-Baptiste Jerome and Josephette Corachine, daughter of Francois Beauchamp and Francois Corachine. Her had first been wed to Lieutenant General Alice R. Goulet, son of Baptiste Goulet and Josette Corachine, parents of Roger Goulet. These last two pages we'll look at today deal with the Sampson family. This is just a simple ascendancy, descendancy whatsoever. It's it's a uh, it's sister chart, of course, is even simpler. We begin with Richard Sampson as the father of Gatien Sampson. Is the father of Paul Sampson, husband of Gwilet Le Cardier, parents of Toussaint Sampson, husband of Catherine Chevalier, parents of Gabriel Sampson, husband of Francois Durand, and Jacques Sampson, husband of Marianne Maitreau. Both lines contributed to me. Pierre Sampson, the son of Gabriel Sampson and Francois Durand, married to Catherine Angelique Gauthier, parents of Marianne Sampson, wife of Levi Andre Diet Saint Armand, and Marie Suzanne Sampson, wife of Louis Gay was the daughter of Marianne Maitreau, the wife of Jacques Sampson, son of brother Gabriel Sampson, sons of Toussaint Sampson and Catherine Chevalier. Marguerite Sampson and Jean Beaugrand did Champagne are also listed on this chart, but I see not how they fit in otherwise. Perhaps that will now be explained. But no, it seemeth not be so. We begin here in Exeter, England with Robert Clement and his wife Elizabeth Wills and their son Edward Willis who was the second husband of Catherine Goth, the year 1677 to 1742, daughter of Angelique Lefebvre Batonville, and Jean Gauthier de La Rouche, a master cutter, 
1645-1690, son of Matherin Gauthier and Catherine Lamua. Catherine Gauthier, daughter of Angelique Lefebvre Batonville, was the wife of first Pierre Sampson, 1671-1709, the daughter Marianne Sampson, wife of Louis-André de Saint-Amant, soldat, Kerignan, si de Perigne Tisserand, so not a Kerignan, in the company of Perigne Tisserand, uh, I'm not sure what that is, it's a occupational title. Um, their daughter, Marie-Catherine André de Saint-Amant, married Pierre Seguin, whom had prior been wed with Marie Josephette Mallet, Dite Mallet, ou Dite Mulot. And all contributed genetic material to me. Well, let's call that a day. I'm glad to have accomplished it rather than be uh, bored or uh, depressed and watching TV. I find this much more spiritually enlightening. I hope you do too. Albeit, uh, listening to me probably bores the hell right out of you. God bless. I love you all.